Wonderland Productions, blowing fuzzy seeds of entertainment in your face. Oh, so they get a young female Yeti to pose as underage, and then Chris Hansen comes in. And I don't like, think that's what this is about. High on the breast of the lake, the bite of the wind is like a slap in the face. Not Meatloaf the singer, an actual pan of ground beef. <laughs> His big foot, giant of a creature. So far, I don't like this movie. Gross Peter Jackson pretends to look at things above him. <laughs> Y'all better not go walking out there with you know, Blubber. Foot. Ah, Yeti! We found him! Yeti. I'm set for life. Oh, boy, my first film, and I'll be playing... Uh, blubber. Gee, thanks. Meat Loaf, Blubber, they're really loading up on the enchanting characters here. Your doors and bolts, your windows, big foot's on the prize. Uh, this fake Tom Waits guy is making me even more uncomfortable than real Tom Waits. <laughs> that is classic blubber. Uh, yeah, I, I think. For hundreds okay, how about we fast forward to the part where Bigfoot rips off both of Blubber's arms and then starts to eat his face? A yeti that's known as a mountain monster, ten feet tall. Called Bigfoot. Also called Yeti, just to be clear. But I'd already written this song before the producers decided on a title for the film. <laughs> the frozen slopes of the Himalayas. Following so close behind Meatloaf like that, Blubber has witnessed horrors beyond human comprehension. To Blackfeet and the Sherpas, he must have seen them all. Is this ever going to turn into a movie? The wind blows cold. If you listen. <laughs> oh my god. Bigger than that. Like a Bigfoot, but mean it. That's why nobody's ever found one before, because they've been looking for the wrong animal. Undercutting their own title and premise before the credits are over. Nice. Yeah, you see, people thought Jaws was a shark, but it's actually a small turtle. You know what to do? Yes, Mr. Grizzly. You make one mistake and I'll have your guts for dinner, son. Well, I'm sure that stranded rugby team we passed would be happy to help. Crouching meat, hidden loaf. Wow. <laughs> I think he's doing the set of Paul F. Tompkins' No, You Shut Up. His method is to walk up to him. What's on the spit, pilgrim? <laughs> what? He perches on a sled at all times? <laughs> Sure, Yetis, known for their uh, ability to ski. <laughs> so at some point, someone said, Mr. Meatloaf, we have the perfect movie for you. Yeah, seems like they're about to catch a Yeti, so a short movie, but a good one. Hmm. Where'd you go, Mr. Grizzly? We'll figure that out in our after-action report, blubber. Whose tent is this anyway, Mr. Grizzly? An insane, disgruntled Henson employee, clearly. Let's find out. Let's find out. See, that's why he's the expert Yeti hunter. Hey, what the hell happened to our tent? Hey! Hey! You looking for something? Because I'm a black stand-up comedian doing a white accent. Is this your tent? Yeah. You guys American? Big Jake Grizzly. World's greatest hunter. You may have heard of me. And by that he means you definitely have never, ever heard of me. Nothing. I'm looking for an animal. Small, furry little creature. A Yeti. Or Danny DeVito, either one. Just 
It's my assistant's little joke. Shh. You guys climbers? Like yeah. social climbers? You guys Even throw the parties during the hey, debutante man. coming out season? Where are you guys from? Texas and you? Upstate New York. Uxbridge. When I see guys rooting through my tent, my first thought is, where are you guys from? <laughs> it's time we be off. We're just going to finish our afternoon stroll. Our afternoon stroll through the Himalayas. See you later. Bye, y'all. Come on, Bob. Don't you ever mention the word Yeti to anyone again, Blubber. You understand me? Yes, Mr. Grizzly. Please call me Josiah Bartholomew Grizzlelophilus the third. Screw up now. Are you really sure he's a Yeti, Mr. Grizzly? Yep. Hang on. I'm just going to belch up a ham. <laughs> <laughs> Do you doubt me, Blubber? Huh? No, no, I guess I expected some big hairy monster after following those gigantic footprints all this way. Then let's explain our what terrible pronouns for the second like time in as many minutes. So he doesn't sink in the snow when he's walking. That's my blower. Give me the binoculars. Can you give them to me the right way, please? My last assistant, sack of garbage, was way more competent than you, blubber. The hell? Give me the real ones next time. Should we restate our unorthodox premise again, Mr. Grizzly? Yes, it's been a few seconds. You see, our Yeti is very small, unlike, you know, a Yeti. You got everything in? No. You got room in your pack for the stove and fuel? Your pack full? Yeah, I don't understand it. I mean, I got everything in it on the way up. Oh, he's not going to take his top off. Himalayas are the worst for peeping. Well, he didn't disappear into thin air when he comes out of hiding. I'll get him. I'm freezing, Mr. Grizzly, and hungry. And I've already eaten all my own blubber. Well, how long are we going to wait here? Get down, blubber, get down. <laughs> I can't wait till blubber falls 300 feet into an ice cave and slowly bleeds to death. <laughs> what happened? Shh, follow me. Yeti turds. <laughs> Thanks, movie. What are you looking for, Mr. Grizzly? Footprints. Stop showing turds! Yeti yeah, skis down the mountain. Stops here. This is where the tent was. Footprints leading into the tent. None leading out. I don't get it. Where is he now, then? Is Blubber even human, or is he some sort of talking slime mold? Yeti's yeah, got his pilot's Damn. license. Good for him. I'll never get him now, Mr. I'm not so sure about that. Those climbers will be in the States long before we catch up with them. Where does a plane take off from high up in the Himalayas? So, we'll let them take him home. Then I'll snatch him back. So he folded and packed a tent with a Yeti still in it? So, Dad, did you do it? Well, let me just get my backpack off first. Did you do it? Oh, hi, by the way. How is Nepal? Come on, Dad, please tell me. It's okay, honey. He's dying to tell us. Well, I don't want to brag, but uh, you guys are looking at one of only two people in the world that has climbed the southwest face of Mount Pinjananga. Yes. Yeah, don't let your actors improvise mountain names. Was it fun? Was it dangerous? Did you see any abominable snowmen? <laughs> well, I saw a couple of abominable snowmen, but they took one look at Mike's face and went running down the mountain screaming. <laughs> hey. Sorry, Mike, but your face really is repulsive. I know. And jet -lagged. I made you a pumpkin pie. Do you want a slice? Tell you what, you go cut me a big piece and I'll have it after my shower. Sure, I'll get it. Ah, the traditional post pinajanga climbing meal of pumpkin yes, pie. I made a big mistake. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Come on now. Help look and slug. Get up. The man's gonna help you with the bag. Open the door. Yeah, your dad wants his pie in the shower. Good thinking. The pie's outside the door. Okay, hey, thanks, honey. I'll be down in a minute. Okay. Whatever you do, don't let the Yeti eat my pie. And now a very detailed shot of him soaping up his genitals. Uh, oh, the underwear, so overworn. Oh. Yeah, the pie still exists in case you feared it had self-destructed or something. He'll have to compete with Homer Simpson for that floor pie. Right, so Yetis are very aware of how showers work?
My daughter's pie is mostly just coarse gray animal hair. Oh well. Oh. If you'd like to rinse those for me, we'll chop those too. Dad's had his pie, now it's time for the salad. Sure. Sure. Very funny. What do you mean? Giving me this mullet, very funny. I mean, very funny. Where's my pie? I brought it up for you, I told you I would. Honey, what you brought me was an empty plate and a fork. So I'm going back to Nepal. Nepal. See ya. Kidding you, Amy. You're kidding us, Dad. Any excuse for some more, I'll get you some. I came all the way home to see you, I should get an empty plate. <laughs> Thank you. To catch a Yeti, come for the pie. Stay for the next scene with pie, too. Do you like it? Mmm. Mm -hmm. That was a yes. Mmm, very good. Better than mom's? Better than mom's. Yeah, in your face, mom. I have something for you, too, you know. You mean a present? Maybe. Where is it, upstairs? Well, why don't you go upstairs and check? Oh, boy, I hope it's a signed picture of meatloaf. My pie! <laughs> Amy? Mom! Dad! What is it? What happened? My present! It escaped! What do you mean? The animal! It ran out of your backpack! Wait a second, what are you talking about? What animal? My present! The one you brought me! No. This is the present I brought you from Nepal. It's a big dog's t-shirt I bought at a monastery. It went behind the chair. It's okay, honey. It's alright. How do you assume it's alright? Kill the thing with a stick and figure that out later. No, it ran out of your backpack. Now we know who ate your pie. What are we gonna pie. do? I mean, we can't just leave it there behind the chair. I don't know. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. What is it? What do I look like? What? Is, isn't there someone we can call okay, or something? We can't call I'm wrecked with diseases as yet unknown to man. I've just. Hey! You took it. Oh, that was my own feces. <laughs> How are we going to find those two climbers, Mr. Grizzly? Just leave everything up to me, Blubber. Big J Grizzly always finds what he's looking for. You ought to know that by now. Right, Mr. Grizzly? How about Zoe Deschanel? Oh, yes. I still right. like it, though. Can't we catch it with a net or something? No, Mom. I know what I'm doing. Now, wait a second, honey. Why don't you let one of us go first? No, Dad. You guys are too big. You might scare them. Let me try first. Just be careful. Be careful, he says to his young daughter as she puts her hand near the unknown creature he picked up from Nepal. Took it. Father of the year. It looks so hungry. Well, he must be after being in my backpack for three days. I'll try Frankfurter. Frankfurter? What are you, a 1920s grandmother? Try a hamburger sandwich next. Guess he doesn't like Frankfurters. Maybe it's a vegetarian. Try an apple. Thank you for the offer of an apple. I only eat human hearts. Is that going to be a problem? Took it. It's incredible. Jeff Dunham has more realistic puppets. <laughs> He's holding my hand. He's gnawing on it. He's drawing blood. He's pulling each finger off one by one. Each one of his gross noises means something worse than the one before it. Big Jake Grizzly to see Mr. Sturgeon. He's expecting me. Loaf is wearing his evening formal roadkill coat. Ah, Grizzly, good to see you. Can I offer you a drink? No thanks, Mr. Sturgeon. You got my telegram? Yes, I did, but... I'm not sure. Put the camera farther the away, why don't you? <laughs> you say you Down. No, that's too close. Yeti. That's right. So they do exist. Thank goodness for that. And thank goodness I for that I terrible I line, read as really badly as are possible. Are you sure it's a real Yeti? Wesley won't settle for anything less. Yes, ma'am. It's the real thing, all right, and I'll have it here in less than 48 hours. This meat doesn't loaf. I need to borrow a car first. Well, you can use one of the limos anytime you want. See ya. Hello, darling. Who's this? Wesley, this is Mr. Grizzly, the man I hired to find you a Yeti. I pay him in table scraps. Uh, now, now, son. Everything is under control. Mr. Grizzly is one of the best hunters in the world. The best. So where is it? Give me it. Meatloaf likes the cut of his jib. Hmm. Chubby, obnoxious, and loud. This kid is going places. Make your lives hell. 
You seem to be doing a pretty good job of that already. Ah, flashbacks to Grandma's foot massages. Have you found it yet? No, not yet. It's a he, Mom. How do you know? I looked. Wh- what? Kid really got down in there and examined his junk? Honey, you know, there are regulations and quarantine, that kind of thing. Oh, this smells good. Oh, should be ready in a couple minutes. This is the most casual Yeti discovery ever. Daughter checking out its genitals, dad hungry for hamburger helper. Come in, didn't you look in it before you left? No, no, it was in the tent the whole time, and I, uh... What? Well, I was just thinking when we came down the mountain, there were two guys, American guys. They were going through our tent. And I knew they were American because their mullets were subtly different from my Canadian mullet. No. Well, yeah, but no, that wouldn't be right. What can't be right? <laughs> well, the guy must have been joking. Joking? He said he was hunting a Yeti. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You have a fantastical creature sitting on your kitchen counter. <laughs> I mean, no one's ever seen a Yeti. I know of. But then again, I'm pretty Logie from all that pie I ate. Who's to say what they look like? Well, I guess people just assume that they're big and ferocious, but... uh... But they must be large. Don't they leave giant footprints in the snow? Uh, You don't think... Big feet means big penis, which, to re-emphasize, is something I do have. find this place Uxbridge yet, Mr. Grizzly? Yeah, I got it. Sure is lucky that guy was so needlessly yeah, specific. Of with two houses and a dog. And a Yeti. Yeah, my Yeti. Mm, honey, these potatoes are great for my altitude sickness. Why isn't he eating? He's probably not hungry after all the food you fed him earlier. No, look at his face. I don't know, honey. He doesn't look well. He's sick. Huh, well, move the sick creature's bare feet closer to our food. It's boiling hot. <laughs> it's too hot for him in here. He's used to the mountains. Come on, we need to cool him down. Why don't you put him in the sink and I'll get some ice? Yeah, okay. Just position the dying animal's anus where we draw our drinking water from. Good, good. <laughs> don't want to miss a single parasite. He's not going to die, is he? I mean, we don't know if he can survive in this environment. Please, don't die. He's not gonna die, honey. Please don't die. It's really good for you. Please eat it. Golden Corral's new slogan. Please Please eat it. I think he's cooling down already. An uglier, less appealing Mac and me. Please. 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 Would you stop saying please? Please eat it. Hey. Please. There you go. Please. I guess that's all we have to do is keep his temperature down. Yeah, and feed him lots of ice cream. Well, I think the best thing for him to do is sleep outside tonight. He can mark some territory in the backyard using the penis we went out of our way to comment on. No, Dad. I have a better idea. Sure, this cures my fever, but what about my many parasites? I think he's going to be all right, Amy. Well, listen, it's been a long day for all three of us. What do you say we get some sleep? I've just got to call the widows of the men we lost on our grueling expedition, and then I'll be right up. The fridge motor burnt out after 30 minutes, and they found the dead Yeti amidst a pile of rotting food the next morning. I don't believe it. My Britishness isn't even going to be addressed. Are you sleeping on the floor? Oh. Hi, Mom. The day was lonely, so I decided to be with him. This I think I'm his wife now. Did you hear him? Well, he probably wanted a snack. A snack, honey? He's eaten half the house. He's been everywhere. He didn't know. He probably didn't even mean it. Can we still keep him? Right, don't get too attached to him, Amy. He might have to go to a zoo or someplace scientists can study him. A zoo? They're going to put him in a cage. Listen, don't worry about that right now, okay? Just get him upstairs and get him cleaned. Start with the matted fur around my rectum. <laughs> That'll teach you to mess up the kitchen. How'd you get so much food on your face? Don't do that. It's life, boy. Stop. Behave yourself. Oh. Put the toothpaste down. I'm going to have to clean up the whole bathroom. I hate to tell you this, but the bathroom's about to get a whole lot worse. This is my room. Okay, sit here and don't move. Let me take it off you. It's too hot. Let me show you my toys. This is Noel the Troll. I'd hump that. 
Dave the dog. Hump that. Jereen. Hump. Danielle. Really hump. Bobo the bear. Not into bears. Greener the gorilla. Hump. And Lionel the rat. Okay, give me 25 minutes plus 15 for the huge sexy and rat. Mudmaster. Ah! You okay? You're not hurt, are you? Don't worry. It's not a real mud monster. It's fake. Richard Terry immediately starts a search for the real mud monster. Too, don't you? I used to have a toy dog with big floppy ears and big brown eyes like yours. His name was Hank. I'm going to call you Hank, too. Wait, what That's grim that. fate did Hank the toy dog suffer? You understand? Okay. Let's get dressed, Hank. One day you will displease me, too, and I will be forced to find a third Hank. Until then, let's play house. The Uxbridge Times Journal. We could afford Mother Goose, but not grim. Hank? (laughs) Or are you going to be trouble? (laughs) I slammed my dick in the bookcase. And he's immediately hired to produce Iggy Azalea's next single. Many critics consider this Kevin Smith's most dignified performance. Lubber's career as a concert percussionist was derailed that day. How does this help us, Mr. Grizzly? It helps this way. These two guys were climbing in Nepal, right? It's a small town, and there's bound to be a story. We find these guys, and we find that Yeti. Well, here we go. Large, disgusting beast sighted in town. Hey! The makers of The Sims thought this house looked too fake. Oh, she would be all right with them on her own for a couple of minutes, do you think? you would be okay, won't you? Yep. Hank's no problem. Hank? Hank? Like the toy dog you ritually okay. dismembered? Okay. I'll be a minute. Okay, you lock the door, okay? Buy lots and lots of ice cream. Bye, yeah. guys. Bye. 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 If the rampaging monster continues to rampage, call Grandma. That's them. I found them. Local idiot collapses immediately after leaving base camp. Dave Bristow. Mike Kelly. Officer Mike Kelly. You mean one of them's a cop? One of them's a cop. Let's stay away from him. Blubber's got priors for felony garbage theft. Dave Bristow. Age 37, married. Wife's name is Kate. Daughter's name is Amy. The journalist is kind of burying the lead here. <laughs> runs a camping goods store. His daughter runs a camping goods store, Mr. Grizzly? My main complaint about stupid? Fellini's films is that he didn't use enough timpani drum stingers. <laughs> I'm going to go out for a bit. Just take any messages. No Dad's taking a break to do some light flashing. Here, have some of this. It'll probably cool you down. That's our cabin in the Adirondacks. We go up there to ski. Mommy and Daddy take off their wedding rings up there and have lots of good-looking friends over. Is it the mountains? Is it the snow? You want to go outside? Quentin Tarantino renounces his foot fetish. going to see you. Here, have some of this. Let's buy some camping equipment. And what better place to buy camping equipment than Muskoka Fine Water? (laughs) I hope nobody's finding paradise by that thing's dashboard light. Wait here. Hi. Oh, hi, Meatloaf. I didn't know it was you. You're my favorite customer. Hi, doggy. store. Mr. Bristow around? Oh, you just missed him. He's gone out. Can I help you? (laughs) Every woman in this film just picked up an accent at random. (laughs) Maybe. I met Dave in Nepal. He was climbing. Well, being dragged by Sherpas. Anytime I was in town just to come on into the store, so I did, hoping to find him. 
He'll be back pretty soon if you want to wait. As long as you don't turn into a werewolf. Oh, Those yeah. things are vile. I'll wait. My pleasure. No. My pleasure. Half off a regular carabiner is nice. Just remembered something. I should probably go on up to the house and see his wife, Kate. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, but she also thought Bad Out of Hell 3 was a good idea. The address slips my mind, though. Oh, no problem. It's Summer Haven number 634. You need his bank account number or social while we're at it? Blood type, maybe? Maine. Then um, straight out of town. Then make a right at the gas station. You still want to go outside, don't you? Now that I'm no longer dying, that would be lovely. Ladies and gentlemen, the most pointless movie scene of all time. Then I'll take them off you. Do you want the picture? He looks like a Furby you'd buy at an Eastern Bloc dollar store. Here, Hank. If it's Girl Scouts, you attack while I grab the Samoas. She's initiating the standard Jehovah's Witness protocol. Hi, little girl. Can uh, can I come in? That's how Roman Polanski starts his casting calls. And, uh, I came to uh, get the end. <laughs> They also bought their locks from an Eastern Bloc dollar store. I just want to talk to you about the Yeti. Wait, wait. Wait, I just want to talk. And now the thrilling moment where Mom realizes she forgot to use the coupon she had for Saran Wrap. (laughs) Gas. Sadly, the same could not be said about the movie's villain. Little girl. We've evidently lost the ability to break down locked doors. Oh, he wants the Yeti. Oh, by the way, a couple of guys oh, come by when you were out. They said they met you in Nepal. Uh, if they said we paid them for sex at the summit, they're lying. They said they met you in Nepal. Uh, what do these guys look like? Mm, well, one was very big. With a fur coat? Mm-hmm. I never actually saw the other one, but I sensed his presence. Your wife. <laughs> You gave them my address? Well, yes, shouldn't I? You swear. Hey, buddy, let me tell you about my particular set of skills, eh? <laughs> She's out there all by herself, you know. Something's wrong. Only rang twice. I haven't got all day. Come on, little girl. Little girl. Come on, E.T. I, I mean Gizmo. I, I mean Harry and the Hendersons. I, I mean Hank. Ah, yes, this is the controversial suicide pact scene. (laughs) Amy's in trouble, man. I just know it. (laughs) Little kids shouldn't play in the rain. So if it starts raining, go inside. Till then, have a blast. Bubba! Bubba, get down here now! Still in there, Mr. Goodley. She's not still in there. I want you to take the Yeti. It doesn't make any difference. Take the Yeti, put it in the car. Don't let it out of the car. We're going to New York to see the Sturgeons. Let's go. This film is mostly about characters going out of their way to mention they're traveling to New York. We're going downstairs. Go on, go on. Give me a what's in here. Why you stay in there? Play with your dolls or something, little girl. Come on. Come on. Oh, thank God, it's the police. Two kids were injured in the crash. Get the jaws of life. Hey, where are you going? No, hey, come back. Let's get out of here. Open the door. I got what I came for. Well, he got the Yeti and some new camping equipment, but he didn't have a chance to get lunch. Well, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> they got that plate because Loathe Me was already taken. Please, somebody help me! Fast. I got it to the floor, Mr. Grizzly. It's, it's not going to go any faster. Blubber was a controversial replacement for Paul Walker in Furious 8. Why is there a box down here marked 
first daughter's toys? Are you all right? Hey. It's okay, Dad's here. Now that the ordeal has ended and the threat has disappeared, Dad's here. Did you see any license plates? In New York, it was one of those fancy plates. Personalized. <laughs> we got ourselves a real Columbo here. What was that? D-O-L-L-A-R-S. Amy? Amy? Mom! We're in here, Kate. I'm going to run a check on those plates. What's going on? Thanks. Did that horrible thing Sorry. finally die? I mean, is Hank okay? What? Two guys forced away in here and took the Yeti. The two hunters I met from Nepal. Amy, you all right? She's going to be okay. She's a little shaken, but she'll be fine. How could they know it was here? He's a Yeti. That's how they knew he was here. He said he was a Yeti. The big man, he was so nasty. They're going to hurt Hank. I know they are. And before I ever had a chance yes, to. It sounds like the same one, exactly, okay? But it's New York plates black. What will they do to Hank? They won't kill him, will they? Listen, we'll work something out somehow, okay? You said they were hunters. Hey, what do you got? Well, it's uh, registered to a Mr. Arnold Sturgeons, New York City. Here's the address. Oops, that's my address up on the east side. More? Me, it's George more. Jefferson. <laughs> Personalized plates. Obviously money. So it couldn't have been Grizzly's car then? No, it's not listed as stolen. Maybe they borrowed it. Can you put out an alert? An alert for stolen Yeti? <laughs> the guys at headquarters would kill themselves. But they brought wow. in here. The guys at headquarters don't sound very stable. An illegal animal. <laughs> Hanging by a threat. Illegally. You make a stink about this, and you'll have a lot of awkward questions to answer. Questions? The guys at headquarters are already throwing nooses over ceiling beams. Oh, you Mike's got some I'll do it, I swear to God. It's not as simple as you think it is. Well, I'm not sitting here while that big hairy monster hurts Hank. I'm going to get him back. Amy, Just as soon as sister, sister is over. Why not? We have to get him back. They don't know if Hank gets too high, he can die. Amy, take it easy. We can't head off to New York just like that. Why not? That big gorilla has got Hank. He needs our help. If you don't help me, I'll do it on my own. Amy? Lady. Don't you dare show confidence in light of your recent trauma. Don't worry about it. Okay, she'll be up there ten minutes. She'll be fine. She'll be cooled off. She'll be okay. Where the hell is my machete? I don't know, Dave. I've never seen her this upset. She'll be fine. Dad really puts the void in touching the void. <laughs> Oh boy, for the glamour of bus travel. Greyhound TB Carriers ride for half off. Wesley Rules 5? Big Snipes fan, I guess. Trash bag dress to empty the dirt into when she's done. Smart. What's right? Right. Middle school boys want to electrocute the French maid. Sure. Yeah, okay, I understand. Mike, what is it? It seems the ticket agent at the bus station remembers a little girl matching Amy's description who bought a ticket for New York. So say again, it's hard to hear over the Chinese restaurant music. <laughs> I realized how attached she was becoming to him. Dave, Amy's alone in New York. And it all happened in the last 90 seconds as we've been sitting here. Now listen, we know she's after the Sturgis guy, right? So we'll just jump in the car and drive to the city. The car's broken down. I left it in the supermarket parking lot. But you, you did what? Don't they have tow trucks in Canada, uh, upstate New York? Look. If I drive you to Albany, we'll get there around the same time as her. See? Hey. But, but again, about your car. Do you... <laughs> As always, everyone getting off the Greyhound makes a silent pact to never speak of the horrific experiences they just shared. I can't take much more of this. That's the fifth maid we've lost in three months. Two electrocutions, a nervous breakdown, a skateboard concussion, and multiple injuries from a piranha in the bath. Oh, their son Robert Durst is such a little scamp. What are we going to do, Arnold? All right, Angelica. I'll call the agency and ask them to send someone new tomorrow. Someone to run a brush through that rat's nest on your head, I mean. Oh, he's a psychopath. What is it, Hayes? 
Mr. Grizzly and his assistant are here, sir. Also, your son whipped my scrotum with a hot coat hanger. I hope you've got some good news for us, Grizzly. (laughs) It was hot. I have your Yeti, Mr. Sturgeon. You want it broiled, fried, maybe a light puree? Yeti? That's a Yeti. I see him! Oh, wait, that's a diseased rat. You hired me to catch a Yeti, Mr. Sturgeon, and I've done just that. Well, yes, I know, but uh, I didn't expect it to look like this. Director's exact words on the first day of shooting. Harmless looking. Wesley wanted a, a monster with a horrible temper and a thirst for blood. It has a penis, if that helps. I've delivered the goods. You deliver the money. How can we be sure it really is a Yeti? For crying out loud! You know? Because I'm Big Jake Grizzly. And Big Jake Grizzly catches what he's hired to catch. This thing just has THC for blood, doesn't it? Man-eating monsters that prowl the Himalayas? They don't exist. But a sweaty 300-pound man becoming a rock star and sex symbol? That exists. exist. And that, right there, that's a Yeti. Also what the doctor said when Meatloaf was born. And there'll probably never be another one caught. Shouldn't it be in a cage or, or something? It's not dangerous. It's basically paralyzed, as far as I can tell. He said you were here. Jeez, you're ugly. Who's the lard butt? Wait, a fat kid calls a non-fat guy fat while meatloaf is in the room? What the hell is going on? Mr. Grizzly has found you a Yeti, Wesley. Isn't he cute? That's not a Yeti. Oh, a knife. Sorry, button in. Crocodile Dundee taking his leave now. So, Crocs. Why don't you take him away and play with him? Is this some kind of scam? Uh... It's a monkey with big feet, not a Yeti. Can't believe you interrupted my Guys and Dolls rehearsal for this. I told you this guy was a jerk. Walk easy, kid. I didn't come here to be insulted. I came here to eat cold beanie weenies out of a can. You sawed off little runt. You wanted a Yeti and I got you a Yeti, okay? Oh, let me. Hey, who let your fedora wearing ass off of Reddit anyway? One more rude word to me. And I promise you this, I'll throw you across the room. You idiot! Woohoo, child abuse! Finally, this movie's going somewhere. 4.5 million now. Also, sorry, your son's spine is now visible. Call the bank and they'll send a courier right around. I'll be back in a half hour. (laughs) Half hour. Could just wait here, but there's an Evening Shade rerun coming on he doesn't want to miss. Mr. Grizzly certainly has a way with children, don't you think, dear? Well, this is a family line that needs to end immediately. Nice of some pizza guy to give them a lift in his Ford Tempo. Boy, are we going to have some fun with you. Worst honeymoon ever. Do you think we made it in time? I hope so. Mike said her bus would have arrived 10 minutes before our train. Meanwhile, hobos have made their abandoned car a toilet. Did you hear something? What? There it is again. It's coming from over there. Let's check it out. Bunch of hoosers better not be feeding my daughter non-maple syrup, eh? Couldn't take the tension much longer. She was missing for almost five whole minutes of screen time. But Dad, you haven't listened. Hank can't survive in this weather. He needs our help. Yeah, the weather seems really hot here, hence Dad's overcoat and gloves. The authorities. As for us, there's a train leaving for Albany tonight at 6.30, and we're going to be on it. Oh, Looks like a Spencer's Gifts ate a Halloween party store and then threw up in here. Party. Hmm. It's rare I'd say a Schwarzenegger style quip is too good for a movie, but Schwarzenegger style quip is too good for this movie. 
Even Michael Jackson thinks this kid's into some weird <laughs> Every 90s kid had the generic hair metal guitar solo tape. Mm -hmm. We do anything, Hank could be dead. He needs our help. Listen, I promise nothing will happen to Hank. Hank Kingsley from the Larry Sanders Show, I mean. You're filthy little mutt monster screwed. We have to save him, Mom. Well, Amy, it's not going to be that easy. How do we get in there? I don't know. You'll come on, it's just some family's house, not the eagle's nest. Oh, come on, Dave, there's got to be a way. Kate, look at this place. You know the kind of lawyers a place like this buys? Unless the lawyers are blocking the doorbell, I think you're good. Well, couldn't you pretend to be calling on business or something? Anything to get us in that front door. I'm not that good at that kind of thing, you know that. Come on, Dave. Please, Dad? Please, Dad, stop being the world's biggest pussy for once in your life. Please, Dad. Hi, doll. U.S. Customs. I'm uh, here to see Mr. Sturgeon. Do you have any identification? Don't need any. Just tell him I'm here to see him about the Yeti. You better come in and see Hayes. Thanks. I thought that maid quit after she got electrocuted. Sturgeon better come up with the money or he's gonna limp for life. You're great, Dad. <laughs> so many kids broke their Nerf guns in half after this came out. Yeah, you little cow! It's not in there either. Oh, how many bedrooms have they got in here? Can you hear something? Not over my despair, I married some Canadian dweeb it's instead of a rich guy. Wow, that maid aged quickly and badly. Thanks. Well, you, what is all this nonsense about? United States Customs Service, Manhattan Division. Just took my first improv class, trying out some new characters. Why don't you step back, sit down, and shut up! He's in here! The sloppy, confused editing led them right to him. This kid will someday yell about ethics in video game journalism on Twitter. Yes, I love it! Now we just need the little girl to punch out all the other unlikable characters in the movie. Hmm. Line them up. This is gonna take a while. Yep. I don't think either one of you realize who you're dealing with here. I've put away more two-bit scumbags like you two, and I'll tell you rest a minute. You got a problem? What's the deal with you having a problem? You got a problem? I make a little phone call. I really want to know. In 20 minutes, I got the FBI, the CIA, the DEA, uh... NAMBLA! Oh, wait, no, no, not NAMBLA. Forget I mentioned NAMBLA. They'll do it, pal, because I've seen them. Now, I got one little simple message for the two of you. Don't mess with me. Because if you mess with me... Sorry, son. Too busy being intimidated by a harmless weenie with no identification. To keep your noses clean, because we'll be watching both of you. Thank you for our time. He should exit every scene with this much shame. Ah, joyless, awkward hijinks. Here we come. Yay! <laughs> In hindsight, that pointless half-hour walk we took was a bad idea! There she is, Mr. Grizzly! Directly in our field of view the whole time. Sneaky! Hey! You're no customs officer! Seeing you outside makes me realize that somehow! We need that money to pay for this mediocre cover of Nowhere to Run! Simon! Wesley, don't you keep any! We seem to be getting away, sir. Butler on loan from a David Lynch film. <laughs> you on your own, kid? Get going, please. Where to? Anywhere, just go! Action low! It didn't last long. <sighs> This is New York. Listen, don't Let's just that. leave her behind, like our car. You got any money, kid? About three dollars. Three bucks. Give me it. 
This ride basically counts as kidnapping, so I need at least five. How far will that get me? This far. Out. No, please help me. Have a heart, Pierce Napoleon Dynamite. Out. Yes, Chief. She's about ten years old, long black hair, pink coat. They forced their way in here and assaulted my son, and then assaulted me. And then they escaped with my son Wesley's pet. Did you just say escaped? Excellent. Sure, you're a tycoon. Tell him you're offering your reward. I'll be giving a reward, Chief. Uh, say a thousand dollars. Ten. Wesley. A hundred. But they need that money to pay for your junior husky fascist wardrobe. <laughs> and if you ever need a favor in the future, yes, I'm sure there will be an occasion. Goodbye. Well, now every police officer in this city will be after them. Assuming they don't all kill themselves like the other cops said they would. She's gone, Mr. Grizzly! I know that. We gotta figure out a way to get across here. Uh, did someone tell him the asphalt is lava? Or, you know, the crosswalk, 10 feet away. What is she, Mr. Grizzly? Uh, uh, don't worry, Hank, there's nothing to worry about. They're not gonna get you, I promise. He's not worried, that sound just means we're seconds away from a red rocket. Well, well, shh. She's gone, Mr. Grizzly. People love to give up on looking for this girl. I can't smell anything in this city. Yeah, that Guy Fieri restaurant has overwhelmed you all the other smells. Hello, discarded half a Zagnut. <laughs> Also, how children react to his music. Whoa! Dead animal vert flop into a rolling alley? Almost never see that trick. Dude! We both know that Amy's a clever girl. She knows her Maybe not velociraptor level clever girl, but a clever girl nonetheless. Just go there and wait for her. Hey, what else are we gonna do? We got no other choice. Okay, come on. They are really committed to losing this child. <laughs> Kids everywhere are breaking their skateboards in half, throwing them next to their broken Nerf guns. Radical! Where's his backwards baseball cap? So natural. Still, somehow, the most believable performance in the film. Wait a second, is he Stinky the Hutt? Oh. Please, please help me! Men are kissing me! Men who are creepier than a glasses karate weirdo in the park? <laughs> hey, no problem, kid. I'll handle it. Plumber, circle at the corner! Chunky guy out of the back! Way. Unless you want to feel pain in every part of your body and fear in every part of your mind. Nikito, don't mess with me, man. Interesting. Plumber. Is that really the first nut shot in the movie? <laughs> Vegas odds had it way earlier. <laughs> this intersection was poorly designed. Tiny cars. <laughs> Two sons? New York City is on Tatooine? She's still here in the city. I've got to eat right here. Yo, curb your damn snow monkey! I'm worried, Dave. We've only got 40 minutes left. Well, listen, I'm sure Grizzly lost her the same way we did. You think so? Well, we gotta believe that. Station, please. Get me there in 10 minutes and there's a bag of Skittles in it for you. Clubber, there she is. the good they go. The Yeti's just about done permanently befouling this cab. Man, City financier Arnold Sturgeon is offering a ten. What is this strange magical box that speaks to us? 
with some valuable pet. Hey, what the? It's her! Well, I Kill her! Yeah, get her! Get her! Get her! And she finds Frankie Carbone's frozen body hanging from a meat hook. Crank, it's the heat, isn't it? I gotta cool you down. Yeah, one of these kilos of cocaine should do the trick. Oh, Frank. Oh, I don't know what I have done if you died. Maybe I should give you to someone. Let's look after you. Okay, let's get this load of medical waste to the river. Stop! Help! Help! They're doing the Star Trek turbulence dance. Better than they did on Star Trek. This is God. Meatloaf was my greatest mistake. We Sorry. lost him, Mr. Grizzly. She's too smart for us. Nobody's smarter than Big Jake Grizzly. We made a mistake in chasing this little girl. We're gonna use our brains now. The picnic table, a true Central Park well, landmark. Mine, at least yours doesn't work. She's never gonna make it. We still have ten minutes left. Then our green screen She's rental is up. She'd have been here by now. They must have caught her. Oh, no, I told you earlier. This is the only place she knows in the city. We gotta believe she's gonna show up here. To catch a Yeti part two. To wait for a kid. Running ever since we've been chasing her. No, not that way. She's been going south. And which way south? South is that way. And what's three blocks south of here? The Socratic Meatloaf. The train station. I summon the lame pet toy gods to heal this girl. My pet monster, Ubali, to me. Hank, it's so cold in here. It's frozen. I mean, I wish I was watching Frozen instead of starring in this. Hey, what's that noise? Sounds like Yoko Ono's in the back of the truck. Hey, pull over, man. ACD, supplying guys who sell meat out of the back of their cars for over 20 years. Can you please tell me where the station is? You're not wholesale meat. That way? Thank you very much. Last train to Clarksville, now leaving platform nine. Pointless monkeys references may be picked up at the lost and found. Suddenly he's being voiced by Adam Sandler. Uh, want to touch the hiney. Yeah, the chloroform's not necessary. Oh my goodness, you're all right. You look exhausted. I'm fine. So is Hank. I think I lost the hunters uptown. No, you didn't. You're a failure just like we raised you. How'd they get here? He's right by our train. We gotta get out of here. We're in a car or something. No, we can't. It's too risky. The Greyhound, then. It's the same thing. I mean, they're looking for us all over town. And besides, poor people? Gross. We gotta get on that train. How are we gonna do that with Grizzly right there? We've only got a few minutes left. Comic device coming through. Wait a second. Wait a second. Grizzly only knows what Amy and I look like. He only got a glimpse of you. He probably wouldn't recognize you if you walked by him. So how does that help us? Away. All we need is a gorilla suit. Good thing that porter was hauling an empty trunk. Is now boarding. All stops to Windsor. Mr. Grizzly, I searched the whole train, Mr. Grizzly. She's not on it. Well, do get a move on. If I miss my train, there'll be no tip for you. They usually save this role play for the bedroom. Yeah. I smell crullers. Maple crullers. They're on that train. Okay, here you go. And hey, thanks for violating every ethical and legal code your job has. Remember, if anyone asks, it's just an ugly service dog. Looking for them everywhere but on the train they were boarding was a terrible idea. I know they're on this train. 
right. Into it. I serve the devil. Check that way. Check that way. Check that way. Stop it. Stop it. Come on, get him to stop. Stop the train. Stop. Stop the train. I have to kidnap a child and her exotic feral pet. Another in your parade of horrible visitors, no sir. All three of them with the Yeti. They're on a train heading north. Some hunters. So why didn't you catch them? Do you know where they were heading to? Albany is the station closest to their house. You have any influence with the Albany police? I own most of them. The ones who right? haven't killed themselves anyway. Well, you tell them to catch the 615 out of New York. They should hold the kid and the parents till I get there. Also call the Uxbridge police. Tell them to watch the house just in case. 634 Summerhaven. The name is Bristow. Got it? Watch Briscoe County Jr. Got it. Are you kidding? I'm not taking a boy on a man's then job. Listen, Grizzly. Why, don't Why can't I just out? die? There'll be a bonus in it for you. How much? Say 50. Make it 100. Done. Grizzly, Mr. Grizzly would like to take you with him. Won't that be exciting, son? <laughs> He's going to trade up for the fat kid from Harry Potter. The limousine is outside, sir. Good. Get my coat, Hayes. I'm going to. Well, hang on. No whining? Is that kid okay? <laughs> Your pet was wearing this when it arrived. Will you be needing it now? Little hotel hand soap. Mmm. Now some conditioner. Chaser. <clears throat> ah, good idea. When Blubber drinks, he tells really dark stories about his time in Nam. I hope you catch that Yeti, Grizzly. Amazing. Someone actually took the time to think up that line and write it down. Nude picture of Warren Buffett? Why? Why? These guys couldn't catch a cold in the North Pole. A pithy jest, sir. Now I put a few things in the limo for you, sir. Kids just love their Brezhnev cosplay. My parents, day one of college. Maybe more with a whistling. Arnold, why don't we go away? Greece. Do you remember Greece? I don't think she remembers breakfast. I'll make those calls to the police. Uh, first, Hayes, pack our bags. We're leaving tonight. And Hayes, don't tell Wesley where we've gone. We'll call later and neglect him long distance. <laughs> Calling the director of Fight Club, warning him not to cast Meatloaf. It's worse than you think. Mike, it's Dave. Thank goodness you phoned. Where are you? Well, we got off the train to stop early. Good thing you did. They're watching the station. Don't ask me how I know that. Hurry up! They're gonna get away! Listen, I want you to do me a favor, and I want you to listen closely. I'm gonna do my famous turkey call. And take it to the Denim Station. We're hiding around the corner from it. Yeah, sure. My boss is a friend of the Bristos, and I was wondering if they've been by it all. Nope. Comedy clarinet. It helps your audience know that something funny is ostensibly happening. Thanks. Pair Goofy Timpani with Comedy Clarinet for a laugh riot. Now available with Kooky Cowbell. That's Cowbell with a K, right? Of course, <laughs> with a K. Okay, they weren't on the train when it got to Albany. They're not here. They gotta be somewhere. Brilliant! Anyone could work that out. But where? The kid's where? voice really has only one setting. Sea Lion. Where? Help me, nude picture of Warren Buffett. Flubber. Give me the state map of New York. What are you doing? I'm talking to you. What are you doing? Shut up, Wesley. Don't tell me to shut up. You're working for my father. Jaden Smith on say. any given movie set. Look, kid, just shut up, okay? Somebody's gonna do some damage to you, and you're looking at the man that just might do it. Just sit there and behave, okay? Young meat defers to old meat. Lover, get us to the interstate. Go into the Adirondacks. 
Adirondacks? Who's like? If he said that by accident, he's an idiot. That's where they are. If he said that on purpose, he's an idiot. <laughs> Mom, how long am I going to stay here for? Oh, I don't know, Amy. We haven't really thought about that much. Can Hank and I go play for a while? Dave, what do you think? Yeah, okay, honey, but uh, don't go too far, okay? Yeah, don't run off to New York or anything utterly stupid like that. It's cold. Suddenly, the movie takes a dark turn. Hey, hey. And it's over. <laughs> <laughs> we. Yep, when I see a hairy good luck troll with skis for feet, I immediately think of pure prairie leaves. I don't think it's this way, Mr. Grizzly. Shut up. Thank you for that close up of the puppet's ass. They look like a couple of little puppy dogs. I told you it wasn't down. Upstate New York has a very lax school attendance policy. She's growing terribly fond of him, you know. We're going to have to make a decision soon. Are we going to eat him tonight or tomorrow? I know. But just shut up. You're going to get it. Amy, you're not supposed to get hit that many times. Seriously, you're starting to bruise. Come on, Blubber, we haven't got all day. Ah, ah good. Ah. I was beginning to miss his adenoidal bellowing. Well, it's not that cabin, Mr. Grizzly. Right. Okay. Another cabin a little further into the woods. Let's go. Are we going to check every cabin on the lake, Mr. Grizzly? Every one till we find them. Now, Blubber. Now. No, we don't eat those. Are you hungry? He kind of looks like Barry Gibb. Amy? Yeah? You having a good time? Yeah. Okay, well, you and Hank better come in now. Why? Because. It's time for dinner. Mom's got dinner ready. We're having pine cones. That's the one. The one with the Yeti out front? The rest. And there's a light on, Mr. Grizzly. They must be inside. So what are we waiting for? I say we hit them. Let's yeah, burn them out. Sleep. I say we do it now. What are you, chicken or something? What's he looking at? Of hunting, Wesley, is you take the prey when it's most vulnerable. We're going to go in when they're asleep. We're unarmed, and surprise is our weapon. Do you have a problem with that, Wesley? You chubby, more annoying version of the kid from Roseanne. There's a shotgun in the trunk. A shotgun? My father never goes anywhere without a shotgun. Hundreds of people hate him! Your dad is Suge Knight? Let's run in the family, Wesley. That's quite an arsenal, Wesley. The little girl's mine, remember? Wow, really? I'm pay her back. He wants to murder another child. It's Flubber, funny. Take this. Take it. Wesley, you stay with me. You're still not going in until dark. You understand? Stop playing with that flashlight. You're gonna drive me crazy. Let's go. I'm gonna take a toe as a souvenir. Oh, okay, whose turn is it now? Seven. One, two, three, four, five. So baked. So baked. You again. Okay. Eight. They licensed the song, and damn it, they're gonna get their money's worth. <laughs> you owe me twenty-five thousand dollars again. Well, all I have is a pine cone left. I mean, I don't have any money. You've got it all. Here, you can borrow some money. Great when a daughter has to loan her father money. And Just ask Billy Ray Cyrus. You know what? It's time to pack up the game and get ready for bed. It's late, okay? Um, so go up and brush your teeth and we'll be up with Hank in a minute. Mom, what's gonna happen to Hank? Well, he's inside by a toasty fire, so he'll probably die tonight. Find us. Oh, don't worry, Amy. No one's going to find us. No one even knows about the cabin, okay? Cabins are impossible for anyone to locate, so don't worry about it. Oh. Good night, Mom. Good night. See you in a minute. Good night, sweetheart. Mm. Tomorrow we'll pull off all the ticks and chiggers your pet keeps giving you, okay? Hey, I'm not worrying for you too. Get your own. Sorry, Hank, I can't hold my wife's hand. Not anymore, you cuckold. Oh, God, the heat, I'm dying. Huh? 
Still a subtler performance than anything Jim Carrey's ever done. What's the matter, Hank? Are you too hot? Of course I'm too hot, you lunatic. I nearly died in a meat locker. Uh, uh, it's too late. Organs failing. Uh. Do you hear something? Only the Grim Reaper come to harvest my soul. Uh, don't shush me. I'm dying here. Oh, no, it's Humble Bumble. He found out I've been banging his wife. I'm going to post such a nasty review of this place on Airbnb. <laughs> Wake up, Pledges. Time for your hazing. What, what the? Where's the girl? The girl is not... Oh, uh, look, this late night home invasion is a real inconvenience here. Now. Now, look, Chris, I'm going to calm down because I know we're all adults here, okay? Hi. Meatloaf caught. What, what did I say about greeting the cameraman? Idiot. Check upstairs. Me and my family alone. I'm going to be forced to call the police. And if I call the police. And if you touch my daughter, you've got another stern lecture coming. She went out the window, Mr. Grizzly. Just shut up. Hey, I found the lights. I don't know, but I just want you to leave me. Ah! Watching at home, Jim Steinman crosses new meatloaf project off his to-do list. Well, at this point, I'd do anything for love, even that one thing. You out there, little girl? I want you to listen to me. Unlike most people flipping through radio stations. I've got your mother and father. But I also got a deal for you. A Groupon for spray tanning. All you got to do is bring me the Yeti. And they're released unharmed. Go for the Yeti. Take the Yeti. Yeti. The Yeti. 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 Bring me the Yeti. That's all I want. Kid, if stuck in the middle with you starts playing, run. Hank, what are we gonna do? Maui or the Cayman Islands? I'm never turning you in. Ever. Why don't we work these two over a bit? Make them yell. Wesley? Set bat out of hell to shuffle. Get back over here. I'm gonna untie them, and I'm gonna let them work you over. Never free them now, Hank. Oh, please. Lucy and Ethel would have them out with only a couple nurse uniforms. Wait a minute. Wait here, Hank. I've got some emancipation forms in the car. Well, better learn how to change a tire since Dad won't be around to teach me. It's been five minutes. I want another I pudding you're cup. Turning yourself in yet? Just give her a little more time, Wesley. Just a little more time. She's starting to get cold back now. She'll start eyeing that warm, skinnable Yeti pelt. Just a little more time, Wesley. She's going to be hammering at that door. She's going to be begging to get in. Lock me to Dunkin' Donuts five minutes past nine. Yeah. She's going to be begging to get in, Wesley. Begging. Well, Hank, that's great. Now we don't have to beg to get in. She's out there. I'll get him myself! Well, but he's outside. Go get him. He's going to ruin everything. But I came here to see a young girl suffer hypothermia. This time next year, mark my words, Amy will want a chupacabra. No way! Wesley! Hey, kid! Why, you cryptozoological loving piece of. Ah! Wesley! Bye! Bye. 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 
Ah, the most satisfying shovel blow to the head since the end of Psycho 2. Idiots. How did she get up there so fast? I think we're past the point of doubting off-screen physics here, Bill. You're right. Disbelief resuspended. Well, it's about time somebody Grinch-proofed this cabin. The crew of the Pequod used to hear Ahab moaning that in his sleep. Blubber! Get me out of here! What are you doing in the hole, Wesley? What do you think I'm doing in here, you fat idiot? Making us miss the quiet dignity of Jake Lloyd? Get me out of here! Oh, all right. Stupid! Huh? Okay, good. Now dig your heel into the bridge of his nose. Ross Blubber, do it for us. She's good. How good is she? Real good. Be more specific! Not good enough. Oh, okay! Sorry I asked. Give it up for Doug Benson, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Benson. It's cruel to let her parents die, but it's worth it to save the small, turd-spewing creature. I know you're here, little girl. Somewhere you could obstruct the chimney from. But where? The only thing you're doing is suffocating your parents, and that's not good. I got a deal for you, though. I'll admit, it's similar to the last one you didn't respond to. You bring me the Eddie, and I release your parents. Simple, huh? Oh, yeah, great. You got six of my fingers. Ow! Anyway, your parents should have lost their higher brain functions by now. I'm going to go poke them with stuff. That was Cypress Hill, everyone. Cypress Hill. You gotta be kidding. Yeah. Do you get it? That was great. Very good. Nobody ruins meatloaf like you, honey. Amy! Amy, are you up there? And Amy, if you gave us emphysema, I'm gutting your pet in front of you. Life Wesley. means nothing without you, Wesley. Oh no! Have a nice swim, fat. See you next incredibly fake fall. <coughs> Amy. Amy. I'm fine. Okay, we're safe. But the funny story about how you almost killed us. That's how you want to do. Listen, get Hank in the car. Grizzly may wake up any minute. Don't worry, Amy. Okay, Amy, I want you to take it nice and slow. Okay, I'm right here. Dad's here. Okay, honey, you're almost there. Try not to think of our captor regaining consciousness and strangling you once you climb down. Watch your step. Take it slow. Take it slow. Come right to me. That's it. That's it. You're almost there. Doing great, Amy. Everything's fine. Hurry, Dave. Hurry. Forget what I said, every dad for himself! Ah! Okay, okay. And how's school been? Good? Even if it's fueled by bloodlust and greed, at least Wesley stays active. Blubber! Look at me, I'm end of movie Jack Torrance. I know, Mr. Grizzly. It's all my fault. You know, Blubber, that's the first thing I've ever heard you say that was right. Frankly, my employing of you baffles me. Hurry up! Uh, sorry, we're out of the ones with wings. A regular overnight's okay? Yeah, I need you to do me a favor. Oh, 
awkward yawn. Okay, there's a key under the back mat behind the house, okay? I want you to go in there, go into my desk in the den, get our passports. Ooh, is he hitting on Did you get him? Oh, oh hi. He's going to meet us at uh, Interstate 90, bring our passports. What do you mean? Honey, your mother and I are spending a month in Paris with the Yeti reward money. Mr. Grizzly and Blubber will watch you while we're gone. I'm afraid we're going to have to take Nick back. No. We have to. It doesn't belong to us, and it's not right for us to keep him here. Why? Well, we just find your happiness irritating, sweetheart. If we were to keep him here, there would always be someone like Big Jake Grizzly trying to catch him. Put him in a cage. Make an even worse sequel. You don't want that, do you? Pay me. We know it's hard for you. You've grown fond of him. But he's a yeti. He doesn't belong here. He belongs in the wild. With Nick Nolte and Gary Busey. Maybe he's got brothers and sisters. And a mummy and a daddy who miss him very much. For his sake, Amy, we have to take him home. Also because I caught it watching me go to the bathroom. I know it's thirst. Go on that station up there, Blubber. MP, Member of Parliament, Gas and Smokes. You didn't happen to see a car come by here about 10 or 15 minutes ago, did you, with a man, woman, and child in it? Could you speak up? Sure, right? They stopped in for gas and by, by made you. a phone call, too. You didn't hear who they were calling, did you? I'd like to say, hello, Hank the Yeti, meet us at the Northtown Mall Starbucks. Well, you see, it's real important. They're friends of ours, and we missed them down by the lake. What kind of loaf would you say I am? They didn't tell you where they were going, did they? Mentioned something about passports. Passports. Rhymes with passports. Never mind, bad joke. Wesley, where's the nearest international airport? New York? Why? I should have thought of it before. They're taking that Yeti back. Open the door. You get the car, sir! Or your extreme chubbiness will tip us over! Thanks. It's okay. Go ahead. Thanks, buddy. If I'd had a third hand, I'd have shaken yours with that one, too. Love you! <laughs> You know, James Wen guest directed this car pulling out and leaving scene. Beautiful. Blubber, fast. Meatloaf talking to his ass as he runs. Let's go. If they get out of the country, you two morons are gonna get it in the neck. Shut up, Wesley. I can't believe how incompetent you are. That little girl has outsmarted you all along the line. And now you can't prepare. This monologue used to be one of my acting audition pieces. Never landed a job, but I got beat up a lot. Good for you, Mike. You know, it's, it's all about leaving an impression. Wesley, and you're going to live to regret it. And what are you going to do to me? Lay a finger on me and my father will bust your ass! Pull over, Blubber. I just saw a discount beef jerky outlet. We must nearly be on them. Pull over! Keep going, fat! This time I'm going to catch those slime balls! You've said one too many things to me, Wesley. Let's have some fun, boy. Break out the travel parcheesi set. Kid, I've got a job to do, and I'm gonna do it without you. I can tell you that. I got something. My job's gonna get done without another can minute I see of you. See you, Harry Jones. Oh, you Harry, huh? Show you Harry. The scene where he shows him Harry got dozens of people arrested. Ah! Ah! Stay cool, kid. He bought that quip for 30 cents at Mr. Freeze's yard sale. Three tickets to Kathmandu by Lennon. You'll have to hurry. It's final call. Boarding gate number six. Thanks. Kathmandu? Must be big Bob Seger fans. Yeah, so it was between that and Detroit. I, I think they chose well. Yeah. I just thought of something. We're going to get the Yeti through security. Especially with that 12-ounce bottle of Snapple he just bought. Hank will keep quiet. That's the only chance we have. No bras, damn it. Hank, you can't move. You have to keep still. Hank, shh. 
They're in here somewhere, blubber shop. Hey. Deli, that's the one. Deli? Food. It's them. Blubber and blubberer. Is he pregnant with a soccer ball? Excuse me, did you put your toys to the machine? Looks bad, but it's just his personal gravy squirter. Uh, Blubber's mad that he didn't get TSA pre. We've all been there. Dangers of saying to Meatloaf, ah, don't worry about what's in the script, Meat. Just have fun with it. This is your fault. Everything your is your fault. fault. It's been your fault from the very beginning. You yeah, they later did a survey, and it turned out the producers of this movie were 749 times more charmed by Meatloaf than the rest of the country. What do you want? What do you think? My rabbit's foot's loaded? Ooh, I'm scared now, boy. Oh. <sighs> Crying out loud. It's amazing they got through airport customs with the Yeti, since he's so obviously a living, breathing, organic creature. I don't know where I pitched the tent. See? Yeah. Somewhere. He's excited. I can tell. But I don't want to let him go. Oh, you know you have to, Amy. This is his home. He won't be happy anywhere else. Not even Bob Seger's beloved Detroit. Steve Buscemi in the role of a lifetime. Want me to take it? Give it to any Yeti and he'll kill three people for you. Pinecone. Thanks. I always wanted. It's sarcastic. I'm sorry we named you after Walter White's brother-in-law. That was weird. Oh, oh hang me. Come hang me? <laughs> I'll, I'll hang you, Hank. I'll hang you. Grub crawling out of your hair. It looks delicious. <laughs> Goodbye, Hank. I'll never forget you. Your smell is burned into my nose and eyes somehow. Hey, Bill. I'll never forget you. And turn the puppet's head 70 degrees right. Go. My first real boyfriend. He didn't wave goodbye. They just don't wave goodbye. They're not human. They're like slightly more socialized Tommy Wiseau's. <laughs> I've already gotten laid. <laughs> Mommy, Dad, look. What is it, honey? Nothing. Let's go home. Guess the thin air up here has me seeing things, especially in combination with all the acid we dropped. Their frozen bodies were found in a ravine many months later. Goofy, this music, this music, it's goofy, goofy, goofy music, it's goofy, it's music. Thank you, goofy. Ace. For you, my dear. <laughs> and one for me. Thank you, Hayes. That'll be all. You may go have your single sip of lukewarm tap water now, but only one sip, mind you, Hayes. Well, if you have to take Metamucil, might as well be in a pineapple. Sure. Arnold. Yes, darling? 
What do you think ever became of Wesley? Uh, he probably married Princess Buttercup and they lived happily ever after. No, no, our son Wesley. Oh, oh, he probably married a canned ham and just screams at it all day. Years later, Wesley's still kicking legs were declared a national monument. Such a Decent waving technique. I must have watched a lot of videos of Queen Elizabeth II. And that's it. For all of us, ladies and gentlemen, we caught a Yeti, and now it's time to reflect on how we spent our precious moments on Earth. And while you're reflecting on what is good and right, folks, if you happen to get this riff anywhere other than the Riff Tracks site, I sure would appreciate it if you'd go on over to rifftracks.com slash donate and throw a little jingle our way so we can keep on making riffs. Goodbye from us and meatloaf. No, 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 not from meatloaf. Goodbye from any kind of loaf, salmon loaf maybe. No manner of loaf whatsoever. Not even an olive loaf? Not even an olive Enough loaf. Enough already, you folks at home. Enjoy this crappy Carpenter's cover. I'm unplugging this thing before any more loafs are mentioned. Zucchini loaf? Goodbye! Copyright by Rift Tracks, all rights reserved.